Alrighty, 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 my athletes. That's right. Mr. Muscarlo coming at you. And in this one, we're going to take a look at example two for graphing and evaluating piecewise functions. So let's just kind of recap a little bit from the last one, example number one. Remember, there's only three steps when you do these. One is to make a table of values for each piece. Number two is to graph each piece, paying careful attention to where you're going to have the open or closed dots. And then the last thing, part three, is just going to be evaluate them given the X value in the correct piece. And when you do that, you don't evaluate it in every single piece. You only evaluate it in one piece. So with that said, let's go ahead and get after example two here. Now this little guy, that's got three pieces. So that very first piece, all right, that one is just six or negative six. So when I look at that, I wanna look at the inequality and I, I want my X's to be less than negative three. So I'll start with negative three and then choose numbers less than that are integers. So negative four, negative five, and negative six. And I can keep going on and on and on. No matter what value I plug in that equation, there's no X value. So they're gonna be the same for every single one of them, which is negative six. So all my answers are negative six, no matter what. Now, again, this symbol right here, that means I'm going to have an open dot. So I'm gonna plot that very first point, negative three, negative six, over here, and I'm gonna have an open dot. So negative three, negative six, here we go. And then all the way this way, each one of those points would be filled in because it goes on to the left forever and ever and ever. All right, so that is the very, very first piece. Now, when I take a look at this second piece, this one, I have a value of x. All right, so x is going to be the function I'll work with. And I'm going to be between negative 3 and 1. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. So those are going to be the values, the integer values that I'll use. In my very first piece, I'm going to plug in negative 3 for x, and I get the same thing. When I plug in negative 2, I also get negative 2. Negative 1 will give me negative 1, 0, and 1. As we analyze this, again, I want to look at the symbols. And the symbols here, and negative 3 is less than or equal to. So at this spot right here, this very first point, I'm going to want to make sure that I have a solid dot. So at negative 3, negative 3, I'm going to go over to my graph. And I'm going to put a solid dot right there. All my other dots, except for the very last one, right? Because the last one, when I look at 1, when I look at this inequality symbol, that point is going to be open. So at 1, 1, I'm going to have an open dot. So I can go over to 1, up to 1, put a dot. Everything in between would be filled in, and boom, there's our second piece. Now our very last piece, our third piece, is going to be x minus 4. So x minus 4 is going to be that piece, and I want all the x values that are greater than or equal to 1. So if it's greater than or equal to, I'm going to include that, so that's going to be a solid dot right there. So when I plug in those values, I'm going to start with 1. I want numbers greater than or equal to 1, so 2, 3, and 4, and so on. And it doesn't end, so it keeps going. Now when I plug in 1, 1 minus 4 gives me negative 3. 2 minus 4 gives me negative 2. 3 minus 4 gives me negative 1, and 4 minus 4 gives me 0. So you can probably start to see a pattern in here, too, as you go to graph these and kind of look at these. So at 1 and negative 3, I'm going to put a solid dot. So 1 negative 3 gets a solid dot, and then 2 negative 2. So you'll notice this is a line with a slope of 1, All right? So we could just draw that line forever and ever and ever, and it doesn't stop, so we would put that arrow on the end. So make sure you put the arrows on the end when you need to. Now when I go to evaluate these, you know, we'll kind of look at it algebraically as well as maybe through a number line. So if I look at it on a number line piece and kind of think of it, so here's kind of another way to, to think about this. If I look at this number line and here was at negative three and over here was at one because those were two of my uh, boundaries in my uh, in each of the pieces there. I was at negative 3 and then 1. So then I could kind of think about it like, all right, well, which piece goes within each range? So on that first part, I would have negative 6 would be over on this part, and then I would have that x here in the middle, anything between negative 1 or negative 3 and 1. And then lastly, I would have the x minus 4 equation. So when we look at these points, we're like, all right, where does 7 fall? Well, 7, so when I look at 7, I want to, 7 is somewhere over here. So I want to use the equation x minus 4. Now, when I take a look at 
one, I've got to make a decision at one. So on part C, I'm like, hey, right here, it could be either one, it could be the X or the X minus four. And if I look at the dots, the dot will say, oh, it's got to be the red equation or the X minus four piece. If I just simply look at the symbols, because I have to make a decision, I look at the one that includes, which means I'm going to look for the one that has the equals along with it. So I could evaluate that as going to be at X minus four. So when we plug in, so that's going to be the X minus four. When I plug in one, I'll get one minus four, and that gives me a value of negative three, which I know because I can see that on my graph too. Now when I plug in negative eight, G of negative eight, that is going to be all the way over here on the left side. So if I look down to that part, ooh, that's the X, uh, the line Y equals negative six. So that will just have a value of negative six. And then when I plug in seven, when I look at which one of these pieces does seven go with? So seven goes all the way over here on the right with the X minus four or the last piece. So the X minus four piece is the one that goes in. And when we take seven and put that in for X, we get a value of three. So those are that's how you evaluate those values there. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and hit pause and then do examples three and four on your own and then when you come on back let's check it and see how we did. All right Rockstar Mathletes how'd we do? Here's example three we've got that pulled up so we've got the first piece which I have denoted here in red so that's x minus four so we're going to start with four and pick numbers less than four like three two one and zero and so on and so forth. Now it's going to keep going forever. So that's why we need to make sure that we have an arrow at the top of the last point that I plot. When I graph the X minus three, the linear piece, so I had a quadratic equation for the first part and a linear equation for the second piece. When I do that, I'm going to start at four and pick numbers greater than or equal to four. So that's going to be four, five, six, seven. When I graph that, I will get the linear function that's shown here in blue. So those are going to be the two pieces that I have. And then when I evaluate each one of these in the correct piece, that tells me, you know, for A, I would have a, uh, an answer of four. B would be an answer of one. And for C, I would have an answer of 16. And you got to be careful on that because even though it's negative four, when you square a negative, you end up with a positive. All right, so four, so at zero, we'd end up with 16. And if you look at the picture, that kind of sort of makes sense because zero would be this point on here the x-axis here and then 16 would have to go way up there so it'd be somewhere way up there a little bit higher All right so that's another visual way you can look at it not just algebraically in example four this bugger we've got three pieces on this one so in that very first piece right we got an x minus one so we want x's to be less than or equal to three which is why when i graph it we'll have the solid dot on that line when I go to the second piece between negative three and two, that is why when I graph that one at negative three, five, that very first point, I have an open dot right there because my inequality symbol is less than. And then at the end point of that one, when that interval ends, when I get to two, at two, zero, I'm going to have a solid dot there. So you can see all the points that are there on that part of the parabola that is between negative three and two. Then lastly, we've just got the equation y equals 2. And whenever you look at these, I want you to always just think about this. Because each one of these, it's like, oh, okay, that's like y equals 2. This one on the top, it's like y equals x minus 1. So you should start to see some things on there that are with functions you're familiar with from previous courses, right? Because x minus 1, you're like, oh, that's a line, bro. But we don't want the whole line. We only want part of it. All right? And that's the whole thing with piecewise values. You're just, or piecewise functions, you're just graphing a piece. So you can see the uh, values L of 7 is going to give us 2, L of negative 8 will be 7, and L of negative 15 will be 14. All right, so with that, uh, be careful, right, because when you make that mistake, negative 15 is what goes in for the X, and oh yeah, negative 15 minus 1, mm -mm, that's going to give us negative 16. So always be careful, watch your arithmetic on there because it happens. We all make the arithmetic mistakes, but we've got to make sure we check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. That's the beauty of math, is that everything we can always check. Be careful, as always. So thank you guys for watching this one. By now, you should understand how to graph a piecewise function. That's either a line or a parabola, a quadratic, and evaluate one of those pieces at a given x value. All right, so that's it for this one. You guys make it a great day, as always, because there's simply no good reason not to. I'll catch you soon, my athletes. Peace out.